Welcome to another edition of Makinamoto Features. Today, we are going to talk about or take a look into the electric scooter, yung nakatayu ka, what they call a kick scooter or the pajak. Ngayon, paano to na imbento? This was actually over a hundred years ago. Some kids, mo silang roller skates, nilipat yung mga gulong onto a plank of wood, nilagyan nila ng handle, at yun ang ginamit nila para maglaro sila. And then, through the years, nilagyan nila ng mga two stroke engines. What we have been seeing a lot of nowadays is the electric scooter. So it picked my interest because I see them almost every day. I see them in Makati, I see them in the Fort, Ortigas, office attire, tapos na ganon. So obviously, a lot of people have been turning to this mode of transportation because of our really bad traffic situation in the Philippines. The story behind this, I went to the church and then I saw in one of the offices there may nakaparad ng kaabo. Tapos sabi ko, oy okay yan eh. Then that guy introduced me to the distributor of kaabo and that guy, Eugene, said, would you like to try out one of our units? Sabi ko, oo ba? Let's do it. Eugene? Yes, yes. Hello, sir. Hi, sir. Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you for taking time out, ha? <laughs> sure, no problem. So, ito na yun. Yes, yes. This is the Wolf Warrior. The Wolf Warrior. Ituro pa lang. It looks more sturdy than what I usually see na parang ano sa labas. Yeah. That is so cool. Macho macho in the macho thing, no? The uh, Kaabo Wolf Warrior. This is priced at 105,000 pesos. Now, alam ko ilan sa inyo, tumataas na yung kilay ninyo sa presyo. Yeah, baba natin yung kilay nyo. This is actually the second most expensive model in their lineup. The is priced at 135,000 pesos. And that is called the Wolf Plus Warrior. Sa mundo ng electric scooter, pag nasa over 100,000, ito na yung pinaka top of the line na the best that they can offer. Kasi yung price range nila can go to as low as 28,995. That's their cheapest one. It's called the Air. Tapos tataas na ng 38,000. That's the Skywalker 8X. Tapos may Skywalker 8S. 39,999. Pataas na ng pataas. And then, pagdating mo na sa Mantis, medyo nasa papuntang 50,000 ka na. And then, it goes up and goes up. So, we're gonna focus on the Wolf Warrior. How do we do this? Turn this on. Ano nga ba natin dyan? the voltmeter for the battery. Full charge is 67. Okay. Low bat is 52. Ilan kilometers bago from 67 to 52? Yung ratrata, yung talaga walang pakialam din nagtitipid. 40 kilometers. Dual motor. Ah, okay. Sagad na yun, walang pake talagang, yes. okay, walang yes. tipid. Okay. So tell me about it. This one is the standard model. 25 AH of battery. 1,200 okay. watts per motor. It has dual motor, so total of 2,400 watts. As you can see here, there's a turbo switch Ooh. and a single and dual. So turbo tayo, yes. di ba? Turbo. Wag na tayo magpakatipid. So yun, 40 kilometers. Yes. Todo. Now, if I'm super tipid mode, ilang kilometers siya? 60 kilometers with this model. Okay. What is this? So this one is the speedometer. Okay. This is the gear. So aside from the echo mode, you have three gears. So ah. one being the slowest. Okay. Three being the fastest. So ano to? Manual yung gearing. I can control it. So, this is the throttle. Actually, automatic naman to. Pero nakaset na siya at the fastest. I can bypass one and two. Yes. And start with three. So these are power levels more than gears. Yes, yes. Okay, right. got it. What is this whole frame made of? This one is a motorcycle suspension. It's actually inverted. Inverted uh, Inverted hydraulic. Na mahaba na ano. Yes. Okay. This is made where? China. And Kaabo is one of the more prominent bands. I've been lurking in your group pages. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At medyo ang dami rin yung mga addict, if that's <laughs> yes. the right word for this. Baha, anong iiwasan ko dito? As long as this one will not get soaked. Okay. Um, In other words, iwasan ko na. Iwasan na. Hindi siya talaga waterproof. Ang ulan, konting ambon or abutan ka ng ulan hanggang makasilong ka, that's okay. Specs. Ang Wolf Warrior, it's got an LCD intelligent display, 60 volt dual brushless motor, 1,200 watts, dalawa nun na motor hubs, 26 ampere first cell battery, yung suspension niya, inverted, it's, it's heavy duty suspension, plus meron siyang 11 inches CST pneumatic tires, full hydraulic brakes with ABS. Interesting. With ABS. Tapos yung maximum speed nito can go up to 80 kilometers per hour. And yung maximum load niya is 150 kilos. So it's pretty heavy duty. can carry two people actually. <laughs> so difference niya with the top of the line, yung 30,000 peso difference. Basically, pareho silang lahat with the exception of the 
battery. It can store more energy. Yung capacity niya bago mag-charge is 105 kilometers. Tapos yung max speed niya mas mabilis ng konti at 80 kilometers per hour. But apart from that, it's pretty much the same. So we're gonna try this. It's a bit weighty. I can already feel that yung weight niya nasa ilalim. Kasi kinakatakot ako sa ibang electric scoots. Sobrang gaang baka tumalsika lang eh. So may palag to sa mga konting bato at lubak. <laughs> Very, very nice. We're gonna take this for a spin. I have a big smile on my face right now. Yes, All right, course, thank you course. so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. You. So let's talk about the pros and cons of using these electric scooters in the metro. Let's start with the pros first. It's a great tool if you're talking about short distance urban travel. Kunyari, nakakondo ka, tapos ilang kanto lang yung opisina mo, and alanganin maglakad, and you just gotta get there quick, fast, and you gotta be efficient about it. It's great, right? It's small, it's compact, it's light. It's like you're literally walking very, very fast in tight traffic. It's easier to maneuver in the sense na versus like a motorcycle. Mas maliksito definitely. Kasi you can hop down, walk to the corner, hop on, you know, all these things. It's very versatile actually out there in the urban environment. Ta da! My first time. This is exciting. Okay, turn it on. 62, we have power. Turn this thing on. Side stand. Yeah! Oh my gosh, so much fun. I feel so tall. <laughs> Banking. So I gotta get used to this as that's the throttle where my pointy finger is and instinctively when you want to brake, <laughs> you can't press that. So my middle finger is the one that's standby on the brake, see? Tasko! I can see the top of cars. Parang drone ba? Teka, turbo na tayo. Urban Assault, let's take on the city. Good morning, Merville Access Road. I really appreciate the vantage point. I'm able to see like way beyond everybody. I've been on this for about five minutes. I'm already feeling more confident. I'm getting used to how it feels standing on two wheels with a very jerky motor. Parking is not going to be as much of a problem. If you fold this thing up, you can bring it up to the office. Or pwede ka na makaiusap kay manong guard sa may lobby. You know, stuff like that. Because right now, it's just actually no regulation. So you don't need a driver's license to operate this. Technically, you can operate this on the banqueta. And then, meron din yung mga style na, kunwari nandito ka sa isang lane na to, kailangan mo kumaliwa. Pwede kang kumanan, tapos sabayan mo yung pedestrian patawid. All these things because it's not regulated yet. There are no rules written down yet or there's nothing under the law yet to guide us on how we can use these in the metro. So it's, it's kind of loose still as of this video. I need more power. Let's put dual now. Woohoo! That's more like it. So I'm traveling like a 40 kilometers per hour, getting a lot of looks from people. Hi! So this is my top speed already, right now. 43 kilometers to an hour. I'm quite confident that technology can make this even faster, but I don't think that's going to be too safe. The wheels are smaller, of course, stability, it's not, it's not for that. I mean, I think this speed is just right. I mean, this is like your regular average in the city anyway, right? All right, here we go. Welcome to the jungle. Congestion and Salas Bridge. Banqueta boys. Ha! Yeah, this is perfectly legal. I can be on the banqueta. Oh, pedestrian. Let's give way to the pedestrian to go down. In traffic, I'm gonna go to single engine, more manageable, and go for echo. Economy. There. I'm also getting a bit of a workout here. Of course, I'm standing up, and I'm feeling a bit of pressure in my wrist. Still not used to this. It's 
it's also friendly to the environment, there are no emissions, although point of contention yan kasi syempre paano ba ginawa yung baterya, paano ba ginawa yung mga parts niyan, and is that method bad for the environment also? So, but you know, everybody uses batteries in their vehicles. Kung binawas mo pa rin yan emissions, it's still better than both petrol and using batteries, diba? So, malaki rin nabawasan, it's good for the environment. Savings, this is what's mind-blowing about this. Pansan, tabi mo na natin yung mga maintenance parts. We'll just talk about consumo pa lang. Every 75 kilometers, you are going to be spending 8.60 pesos. 8 pesos and 60 cents every 75 kilometers. Pero that's tipid mode. Now, how does that translate to kilometers to a liter sa gasolina? Let's base the cost sa mga petrol, guys, at 50 pesos to a liter, which is the average naman nowadays. Round off pa natin from 8.60, let's round it off to 10. So, you multiply that by 5, kasi 10 times 5 is 50, and it's 50 pesos to a liter, di ba? So, tapos yung 75, iba multiply mo din to 5. So that's 75 times 5, and you're gonna get 375 kilometers. So kung iko compare mo consumer nito versus a motorcycle, this can essentially travel para maintindihan natin lahat 375 kilometers to a liter. No questions asked. Tipid talaga. Kung mapagsamantala ka pa sa opisina, <laughs> di ba makikisaksa ka dun? <laughs> I think it's about an 8 hour charge. By the time you go home, you're fully charged again. Pero syempre, hindi lang naman yun ang iniintindi natin. There's also the battery that you have to change every 4 years. And the cost of the battery is a whopping 40,000 pesos. Sabihin natin na sagad mo siya 4 years, maalaga ka sa scoot mo. That's about 10,000 pesos a year and then there's the controller that costs 3,500 tapos yung motor hub naman 8,000 pesos so cost wise 40,000 for the battery 8,000 for the motor hub 3,500 for the controller every 4 years I'll give na 50,000 pesos a little over 1,000 pesos a month still not bad Diba? It's still not bad. So, pag sama mo pa yan sa savings mo sa gasolina, kahit anong balibalik ta rin mo, tipid ka pa rin. So, I was practicing in the village a uh, good 2-3 days. I wanna make sure. Tapos, sumabak ako. I mean, I went out there. I went through EDSA. And my goodness, what an experience that was. That was exciting and thrilling at the same time. Ayoko na ata gawin yun ulit. <laughs> so, I am in Shaw. And I'm going back to Paranaque via EDSA. So, let's do this. 6 o'clock. Wala nang mas na rush hour pa dito. Eto na yun. Okay, here we go. Oops, it is easy. Okay, we're about to hit Edsa. So the light here is uh, pretty bright. Again, before I got myself into Edsa, walang law, eh, walang rules. Yun yung sinasabi ko, wala pa siyang regulation. I chose the time. Hindi ako sumabak ng Edsa na tipong mga 9 o'clock ng gabi onwards na mababilis na yung mga bus at mga ibang sasakyan. I went there in the middle of bad traffic, rush hour. And we're talking about in between 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Wherein everybody was crawling. The chances of people swerving just like that is down to a minimum. Because nga, mabaga lahat. And it gave me an advantage because I'm smaller and I'm faster than them and I'm just weaving in and out. It was stressful because because EDSA is EDSA. Really bad roads. And I got small tires. So, I'm Alright, EDSA. Here we go. Okay, let's stay on the right. Huwag na tayo makihalubilo sa mga mabibilis. Iwas na tayo. Gilid, gilid lang. So, I'm gonna stay as close to the sidewalk as much as possible. I don't wanna go through that. Unless absolute gridlock. Doon ako sa sabak din. But now, I'm fine right here at the side. Okay, so here is the gridlock. Pwede na tayo sumabak. In the traffic, we will lane filter responsibly. So let's talk about the cons. So yung cons naman for me regarding this vehicle, it will primarily revolve around safety. I don't know what you're saying. Eh, delikado rin motor eh, di ba? Okay. Kotse and motor, obviously, motor mas delikado. I mean, just by looking at the two, isa, may seatbelt, you're inside a cage, a lot of crumple zones there to protect you, airbag and all of that. So, kumbaga, like what I said before, ang motor, para kang nagsisex na walang condom. Delikado talaga. Ngayon, this electric stand-up scooter, para kang nagsisex na walang condom, tapos yung partner mo pa, may asawang iba. I got my kid's toy here to illustrate. When you're in a car, may unang tatamaan bago umabot sa'yo. Sa motor, meron at meron tatamaan muna bago ikaw. Now, you might be saying, you're comparing that. Ito, dalawang gulong din naman. Ganun din yun, Zach. No, it's not. Basically, here you are, right? You're on an electric scooter. Ooh, ha, wala traffic. Ha, 
Nagsipid ako sa gas! <laughs> you're on an electric stand-up scooter. Sa likod, you are exposed. Sa side, you are exposed also. That handlebar in front of you, that thing's gonna slam into your chest. I mean, no questions asked. We cannot compare motorcycle versus electric scooter. Hindi siya ganun din. Another thing would be the tire size. Those small tires are dangerous with potholes. Yung mga lubak natin sa Metro Manila. I've seen the big manholes that are not covered in the city. Eh, motor nga, nahuhulog doon. Ano pa kaya, scooter? And on top of that, you also got, you know, the crazy drivers that you gotta deal with. I mean, you can be super, super careful and then biglang some asshole na talagang kamote, walang pakialam sa iba, sagasangan na ng bigla, diba? So, I think we can all agree that it's more dangerous to use this in the metro. So, I will not go to EDSA, let's say, midnight where there is no traffic, but you'll have more cars that are just speeding. EDSA for me on a scooter like this will only happen during rush hour where everybody's slower. Any other time, forget it. At this point, I am clearly double the speed of everybody. <laughs> So there is no regulation on this yet. From the motorcycle getting into this, nani bago talaga ako. It's two completely different things. One, you're standing up, motorcycle na kaupuka. You're anchored using your ass. This one, you're using a lot of leg power. You are constantly balancing and adjusting. So you gotta position yourself, one leg at the back, one leg at the front, and you gotta lean forward a bit when you're accelerating. And when you hit the brakes, you gotta push back a bit. What I had to learn was how to plant my feet when accelerating because this is new to me. One position has to be back, one at the front. Para stable ka. Pero yun nga, amongst the other stand-up electric shoes, yung Kaabo Warrior level, mas stable siya sa iba. Kaya siya mahal. But between that and motorcycle, cannot compare. So it could go up the flyover easily. I had to put it on uh, two-wheel drive. Yeah, no problem. Here's where I can go banqueta mode. Banqueta mode. <laughs> what a motorcycle cannot do literally go down and walk but not to say that it is not a thrilling or an exciting ride. At least for me, one of the reasons why I do ride a motorcycle is fun for me. Ang importante kasi dito, no matter what, is you understand the dangers. You understand the pros and cons of what you were getting into. When I got myself into motorcycles, I understood this. I studied, I took training, practiced as much as I can. Kasi I don't, hindi mo pwedeng saba ka na lang dyan. I mean, mantitrip lang ako with thrills and all of that. I might as well be knowledgeable and responsible about it. Not just for me, but for the people around me. So if you're gonna get into this, alam niyo what you're getting into. Be aware of the limitations that you have with this. It makes you more defensive, actually. Be aware of what your tires can do, the speed that you gotta deal with, the acceleration, and all of that. You have to understand. Clearly, there's value to the scooter in bad traffic, right? When you see somebody on an e-scoot, it looks like it's dangerous kasi parang nakatayo siya at dumadaan sa'yo and all of that. But when you're on it, it's, a, it's actually a different feeling. But I wouldn't go in EDSA until you given yourself a lot of saddle time on this thing. Train yourself, make yourself comfortable. Kasi gali ako motor to this, it just seems very light. It's like a konting galaw ko lang sa manobela. And I'm sure to all of you who are using e-scoots like this, paglipat nyo sa scooter na mas malaki or paglipat nyo sa motor, bigat na bigat naman kayo. So you need a lot of saddle time. Practice, galingan nyo. Because no matter what you say, two wheels is two wheels. It's gonna be more dangerous than four. So that said, if you're gonna get into this, go all out now with safety gear. As in, gloves, jacket, may pads ka dito, pads sa knees, helmet, the works, you know, proper shoes. Again, you're not just protecting yourself from a spill and all of that. You're trying to protect yourself also from possible collisions. Diba? You want to prepare. So, iwasan nyo na yung pagka-squid. Squid is a term used on anybody on two wheels that's not wearing protective gear. Mukha lang pusit talaga. Squid. Protect yourself, right? And each time you dress up, you're also inspiring other people who are getting into this na, ah, okay. Yan pala dapat. Yan yung tama. Tapos, pogi ka pa. Diba? Pono ka, diba? Ka-full gear ka. Tapos, papaso. Ganun. So that's my assessment for the Kaabo. Is this something I would want to own? Definitely, but I will have to adhere to certain rules that I have to make even for myself. I will completely avoid EDSA, Dana EDSA. I'm gonna go for the side streets. I think it's perfect for short distance urban travel. I just wish nga ma-regulate na nila para meron tayong mga rules na susundan lahat para hindi lahat labu-labu na lang, di ba? The future of motor vehicles is gonna be electric, whether you like it or not. So anything that comes out electric catches my attention just like that. So with the guys at Kaabo, thank you very much for lending me your unit. It was with me for a good two, three months, so I've spent a lot of time with that. Again, ride safe. So this is Zach from Makinamoto Features. Okay. Ciao.
Kahit na ang bahagari Sikretong babahagi Mga ulap ihahawi Nais ko rin mawari Sa puso mo mamalagi Makita ka palagi Lungkot ko ay napapawi Matamis na iyong labi Sa isip ko sumasagi Hiraya manawari Sana ay ganito palagi Tila yata ay nayari Sa swerte ako'y balubi Di na nga magpapalugi Pwede ba kitang maari na Italunin Sa kali Ang mundo Bukas ay Tumuho Basta ang Alam mo Ikaw ang Mahal ko Pakinggan mo sana mga nakatagong mga himig Handog na may pag-ibig Dalang mga ligalig Buwan akong kinikilig Mustan mo umiibig Sa dagat mo siga Sigma pa yapa kitang iniibig Malapili ko lang marami ang nakaabang Mga matang nakapaligid ayaw pa lamang Malamang di ako magtatabang Di ka sana magsawa hindi ako malalamang Talonin, sapat ng pahiwatig Wala na ang iyong galit Gabi-gabi na lang ikaw ang aking panaginip Ngiti hanggang gilagit, sa'yo ay naaakit Sabay halik sa hangin, malakas na pagkaihit Mga tanong na bakit, ako ay nilalait Maramdaman mo sana at sumagi sa iyong isip Gusto ko mong lumapit, maraming nakasingit Puso mo'y nasilip, nabigong paulit-ulit Bilog ang mundo, huwag mo sanang iikot sa atin Malay ba natin kung para ba talaga sa atin? Ikaw ay alanganin, hinga ka lang malalim Palasyo na mahangin, partida pikit ka lang at Oh, tumalo, ah, talo Oh, talo, ah, talo Kahit gaano kataas ay tatalunin